How's it going? Hi, Carlos. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm Sophia. It's a muggy, stormy day, and I'm visiting artist Carlos Villaprado in his Greenpoint studio. Carlos moved to this space three years ago after having various studios in Williamsburg. I love these big old freight elevators. Carlos travels the world gathering photographs and materials that inform and inspire his work. I was eager to find out how he combines all of his ideas into one process. From what I know from your work, which I've only seen online on your website, I can tell that it's very conceptual, and you're kind of straddling many, many different materials and different ways of thinking about ideas and meanings. I mean, could you tell me a little bit about yeah, yeah. the materials? Yeah, So I went to school for sculpture, but I came from a background within photography uh, and computer science, basically. Um, and what drew me to sculpture was the fact that I can form a conversation around uh, a concept and really engage a space and kind of activate it. Mm. And within that, I am a person that loves learning and um, I like to teach myself all these different kinds of mediums. So it's like, I like to kind of confuse the kind of organic ideas that one's perception of what a painting would be like or what a drawing would be like. These are just uh, panels that I'm preparing uh, for these uh, photographic frescoes that I've kind of been working on and off for the last six years. And it's gone through many iterations What's uh, a photographic fresco? Exactly. <laughs> I'm always trying to invent something, a new way of uh, working. So this uh, is trying to find a way to uh, photographically expose an image on a uh, plaster surface. So the image that I'm using here is actually from last year, from the migrant crisis on the border okay. uh, between the US and uh, Mexico. Yeah. So this image really kind of uh, took a hold of me and I just kept thinking about how, you know, in Italy, Italian frescoes, it's always a procession, it's always kind of a group of people moving. I kind of got obsessed with this photo that I think people really gloss over when they initially see this. It's just the atrocities of uh, being shot, you know, a mother and their children being shot with tear gas. But the clothing that they're wearing, she's wearing a uh, frozen uh, shirt and, you know, and the little girl's wearing a little Buzz Lightyear shirt. But then for me, it became this other aspect of um, the transfers of clothes between America and the different parts of the world and, you know, the waste and all that. This is a finished artwork. This is a scale replica of uh, Manet's Olympia, which is this painting right here. This mm. is just called Olympia. This is one of the earliest things that I was doing with this plaster medium. I really like this piece, and because of its inherent, again, back to what I was saying, it's very minimal. I took high-res photographs of the painting, okay. uh, and I found where all the cracks were in the painting <laughs> right now. So once, uh, and the plaster in itself is uh, tinted to be the same color as it was first uh, shown at the Salon de Paris. Um, and then going in there, it's actually carved into the plaster. The, so when you're putting the marks of the graphite, you're not just leaving a, a mark, you're carving out. So it's actually all carved and then filled with graphite. What happens here is just through time um, in itself, like the, the white uh, female figure actually just completely gets blurred out. Um, but what happens with just the, the painting, the physicality of the painting, it creates a halo around the black figure. And I think that's kind of a very beautiful way in the in painting itself is kind of changing its own history mm. through time that's and kind amazing. of letting you think about it in a certain, in a different way. It seems like you're in your studio and you're playing with meaning. And, and if something has meaning, then it has history. But even in the midst of all this kind of enigma, at first glance, it seems like you're finding new meanings and new connections. And I'm wondering what that makes the studio feel like when you're in here. Do you feel like you, you can't focus on one thing? Are you like moving around? Are you, are I, you writing things down? The best way to make sense of how I work is kind of going back to computer science. Basically, I, I'm thinking of uh, an idea or a concept. And every individual artwork 
is like a line of code in, mm -hmm. in order to describe something else. So it's the buildup of all these individual artworks that create the final artwork. Establishing a flow, like a workflow, is something that has driven me to madness many times. Um, sometimes it has to do with maybe being in the studio every day, repetitively, and then you kind of get into the flow. Sometimes it happens in an hour, sometimes it takes a week. I'm wondering, can you talk to me about your workflow and what does that feel like? Uh, can you just say that again? What if, sorry. <laughs> do you because know it, like a flow state? No, I do know a flow state, but the, that's I think inherently what's problematic with being an artist in which we just never stop. <laughs> You know, I feel like there was a moment at one time after grad school that I was sitting there with my friend and we were both having, you know, we were both working whatever jobs we had and we went for dinner and we sat there and we were looking at everyone walking by and we're like, this is just not fair. <laughs> like everyone, you know, who has, you know, who works, you know, for a living doing, you know, construction or something, going back to their home, to their family has this idea of having time off. And with whatever we have done, it's just like we can never have time off. Mm. So there's always this kind of anxiety of trying to get one more thing finished before the night is over. What's the name of the storm again? Uh, Isaias. Isaias. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. How but far are we right now from? It's a 10 minute walk. It's not too far. Oh, um, wow. So it's kind of where in the industry side of Greenpoint, and we're walking towards the old industry side, but uh, obviously it's turning around with all the uh, construction near the waterfront. How do you feel about that? It's a, it's a mixed bag of things. I like how quiet it was. It is now, relatively, but <laughs> it's obvious that it's going to uh, just gonna be an influx of people. My God, <laughs> your house is amazing. Thanks. It's nice to see your face too. I know, it's a little <laughs> bit awkward, but <laughs> come on in. Wow, how long have you had this place? Uh, my wife has been here for about seven years, I believe. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's so it's kind of one of these old Brooklyn, you know, chaotic spaces <laughs> that someone built out that really shouldn't have had, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's been amazing. So, I love uh, it. and it's been great to be here during a pandemic um, because it allows us to like have space and, you know, I can work at home as well. And this is Imo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Guatemala, I was born in Guatemala and uh, my dad came here when I was born, basically lived here until he got his uh, residency. Uh, and then my mother and I came over so I was about around eight years old when that happened. Oh, wow. So, and then we grew up in, uh, well, I grew up on Long Island. With a name like Carlos, it's obviously that I'm not, like, let's say, American, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, it is, it is I, I am from Guatemala, but I am much more, I'm, I'm an American, as an American can be. The American dream is I kind of fall in line with that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, you know, I understand where I, come from and I understand the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of part of, it's that ties into my work because it's a struggle that I have. How do I acknowledge myself as a minority, but also as an American mm. without exoticizing myself or my culture? I've been making these drawings with a machine. I found this 3D printer. I started getting into 3D printing and back into robotics and coding. And I, last year I was making these drawings by hand, which took, you know, weeks to make. Mm. Um, and they're all very, you know, mechanical in a sense. Um, but in the way that they are produced, I like that, you know, there's always some sort of, I was never perfect. You know, it's like, I'm not a machine. But it got to the point, it's like, all right, what if I make a machine to make these things for me? Within that, I wanted to kind of push the boundaries of the software and actually really simplify it. So not have something that's very exact or very um, um, controlled, but I actually attach, let's say, a, the most simplest object, and that being the pencil. The pencil itself blurs the lines of uh, the mark making and the creator. 
I, I have a particular notion of the idea of the artist and the artist making drawings within the school of thought that um, mark making in itself could be inherently an artwork. And for that, if I can separate myself and add a filter that is also mark making on its own without my um, control, but it allow itself to make accidents, mm. then I feel like that gives the agency to an idea and the machine, as opposed to me as the artist, just making a mark on a piece of paper and letting that be the artwork. I think there's a preciousness uh, that artists can imbue in things that um, I'm sort of against. The removal of me and adding something that kind of complicates it, I find that very interesting. You're dealing with all of these ideas that are invisible. They're invisible. They're in your head. They're in your soul and your heart. They're floating around. And you're having to negotiate, like you said, um, these different things and have them maybe strike a new meaning, maybe accidentally or on purpose. Um, I'm wondering if sometimes those ideas feel more concrete than the substances and the materials that you use. I'm going to say no. <laughs> I think that's the beauty of it, because it is a negotiation. What I'm trying to do is orchestrate these different moments in time, in space, with different objects to kind of allude to a kind of, you know, melody and chorus in my head that I don't think it's very easy to kind of understand. But if I can drive the meaning and points via a text, a photo, a video, to allude to a feeling that I have, an actual feeling or an actual, you know, idea. If I can approach that, that's the goal. There are machines involved in everything, but um, I never want them to be at the forefront. It's doing this for me, but it's not the end. I have to go in and erase things or they're specific. So it actually brings it back to this idea of photography, which at the end of the day, I still have to dodge and burn the actual image. So I have to go in and like take out the highlights, you know, darken uh, the darker spots by using a smudge stick. It becomes this whole play as well. Do you feel like this project and even this machine, do you feel like it's part of a new maybe area? in your work, maybe in a step forward that you haven't been before, would you say it even defines you more clearly as an artist? No. Do you have one that does? One work? A one project or one work, yeah, that you were like, yeah, this is, this is who I am. This is, this is the work I'm making. Now I see myself. I don't think so. I think, I think it's within the whole aspect of, I think within my whole body of work. It's it basically, that's what it's gonna come down to. I think when it's all looked together at once, maybe I'm just a little bit narcissistic in that, that I think, you know, when it all comes together, maybe there's a greater story within it. And I think that will be me and it will be my story. Ideas can strike us at any moment, but we can also seek them out, cultivate them, pluck them out of a whirlwind of chaotic thoughts. Sometimes we need to get lost in the process in order to find a clarity that's meaningful or new. Sometimes only the bigger picture forms the ultimate meaning of what we're working on. And sometimes it's just the journey itself that's fulfilling.